All right, here we go. Welcome everybody to our first ever uh, Legacy Zoom. Uh, thank you so much for coming. I'm, I've been super excited for this all day and really all week and really even since uh, we started thinking about this. And so we're not, gonna, we're not going to delay anymore. We're gonna jump right in. I'm sure more people are gonna come and be a part of this meeting tonight. And so uh, I'm gonna turn it over to Kim and uh, we're gonna be talking about just laying a great foundation for our leadership because every great building uh, begins with a foundation. And so Kim, why don't you take it away, jump in and uh, teach us a way, go for it. Awesome, well I'm so excited to be able to have the opportunity to share on our first ever Legacy Zoom. And what I'm really excited about is seeing each of us have the opportunity to multiply our ability to really make a difference. We talk about that all the time and to really be able to uh, have ourselves invested into and develop ourselves as a leader. And I have just really truly been uh, expecting this to be a Zoom for each and every one of us, to be uh, something that accelerates and, and activates things in us that truly allow us to uh, advance our influence. And so if you were there on Sunday, one thing that Pastor Doug uh, reminded us of is that leadership really is simply um, influence. And every single one of us then by definition is a leader and what I uh, envision and want to see for each of us in the Legacy Zoom community is that we really truly begin to recognize that we are leaders and by doing so uh, then we we maximize that influence by being equipped to live and lead intentionally. That's the big word tonight is that it's not accidental influence but we are intentional in our influence and that's very much why we're on Legacy Zoom. And so tonight I get to talk about one of the crucial key uh, keys to leading intentionally and effectively, and that is first and foremost, defining your why. And what I mean by that is uh, every decisive action, including the one that we're making right now to develop ourselves as leaders, to be invested into as leaders, uh, requires answering for ourselves the question, what is my why? W-H-Y, what is my why? Who is my why? Why did you, when Pastor Doug talked about the Legacy Zoom community on Sunday, what stirred in you to be a part of this, to go ahead and download that app? What made you uh, decide to jump onto our first ever Legacy Zoom? Or if you are watching this video at a later time via our YouTube channel, why did you do that? Why did you make that decision? Um, in, in, if what we do and how we do are sort of the outer rings of it, our why is the bullseye. It is the reason why we do something. And uh, Simon Sinek, author of the book, Find Your Why, he puts it this way. He says, great leaders are the ones who start with the why. It's not just what we do or how we do it, why we do it. And so it really does beg the question tonight, why does the why matter? Um, and truth be told, uh, leadership is, it is truly one of the most amazing get-tos. You hear us talk about the get-to all the time. It is one of the most amazing get-tos to know that God can use your life uh, to influence and impact the lives of other people. That is an amazing and thrilling, uh, really privilege. But leadership is also sometimes very uh, brutal. Leading on purpose is hard work. Um, it takes sacrifice. It takes choosing selflessness and being mindful about how our lives affect the lives of other people. And so knowing your why keeps you going on those days when it's brutal. And, and, and I think about like even all of you who are parents on those days when parenting, I hear sometimes isn't always glamorous, it keeps you going. It keeps you focused on the why I'm doing what I'm doing, why I'm raising those kids the way I'm raising them on those days when it's less than glamorous. Knowing your why keeps you going. Knowing your why 
in your workplace keeps you going day after day after day and not just not just trudging through, but going with the intention of being the best employee, having the most excellence, being a, a, a boss or a coworker of integrity, of compassion, of honor, um, going there on purpose and for a purpose. And then knowing your why in ministry is what compels you to serve when it seems like that serving isn't seen or appreciated on those days when loving others is inconvenient knowing your why is what continues to move you with compassion towards people and to compel you to give when even on those days when it seems like you have nothing left to give your why is what gets you out of bed in the morning it's the the purpose for your passion our why is what keeps us going when we feel like we're bored or tired or frustrated. It's just what keeps us doing the things that really matter. Even when those little voices in our head says, does it really matter at all? Our why continues to be that center bullseye that keeps us moving. And so um, if you don't know your why, if while I'm sharing this, uh, you're unsure of your whys, I encourage you spend some time tonight, take the action step tonight uh, to to begin to write down, why do I do what I do? Not just what I do and not how I do it, but why do I do it? What truly drives me? What truly gets me out of bed in the morning? Ask God to reveal the why to you. And if you do know those whys, uh, I encourage you to take time to write those down. And here's why, um, because there are days when we will need the reminder. There are many days when you'll need that reminder. And so we write things to keep it in front of us. And if you've ever been to my apartment, you know, I keep wise and reminders all over the place. I uh, personally started my own leadership journey now, like 22 years ago, alongside Pastor Doug and that's in youth ministry. And I started, I remember walking up to them because I had one why in my sights and that was so that 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 I could love other people and believe in other people the way Pastor Doug and Annette had loved and believed in me and, and through that that they could truly encounter Jesus. And so that's always been my why and I keep that before me so when when those days not if those days come but when all hell breaks loose or when it seems like it'd be easier just to kind of give up I remind myself of the why and that makes giving up a non-option in fact one of my greatest whys and it's so simple and they don't have to be all extravagant sometimes it's those very simple clear clarified whys that are, are the perfect ones to have in front of us but I have one on my bathroom wall that says when you feel like quitting remember why you started and that causes me to remember whatever that category it is in my life it causes me to remember why did I start this journey to begin with and I just want to encourage you can you imagine what your life would look like even just three months from now, if you continue to invest into yourself and develop yourself as a leader, what would your family look like? What would your family dynamic look like if you grow just a few, uh, just a few incremental growths? If you zoom just a little bit more than where you are at right now, what would your life look like? Can you imagine what your workplace would look like? Can you imagine what our church? Would look like. I just really want to encourage you to have that dream, to put some crazy on your dreams, and to continue to be a part of this legacy Zoom community. I know it's going to be that 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 Zoom for all of us. And so, Pastor Doug. And there we go. Awesome. Great, 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 great word, Kim. Thank you so much. Um, uh, one of the things that that I really want us to take away from tonight is really taking the time to really pray about and think about what your why is, even why you're on these calls. You know, like what, like what Kim said, just what stirred you even on Sunday? What, what are you tapping into? What's God trying to, to bring out of you? That's some of your why. And so we'll get back to some of that here in just a few minutes. I want to take a few minutes now uh, to share another vital, um, 
uh, aspect to and another vital foundation. Tonight's all about laying the foundation, something that we need to lay in our lives if we're going to maximize our times together each week. You know that uh, earlier in the year in the summer of awesome, we talked about coming ready, coming prepared so that the word that's planted in us can, can produce fruit 30, 60, and 100 fold. And so uh, as with all of this, you know, decisions need to be made. As a matter of fact, there's going to be a whole lot of decisions in the days, weeks, and months to come. And so again, uh, like we started, I just keep referring back to the summer of awesome. Um, uh, let's create a yes movement. I want to keep that before. So often we forget about, you know, what's preached and things like that, but I want there to be a yes in our heart that when God says something, it's just yes, that we resist our resistance to him, that we are going after those things and we're not resisting that. And so, because we know that, that God is for us. We're not trying to fight him. We know he's for us. We know that he has a plan for our lives and because he's called us to make a difference. These are the things that, that are vital for us. And so Zoom, this whole group in the, in, the, in the season to come, it really is about developing you as a leader. And like Kim said, and I said on Sunday, leadership is influence. And so, but it's also, you're going to find a process of maturity, just like when you go through freedom, freedom is a process of maturity. And so on this, it's not about being entertained. It's about giving yourself to your own growth. And so we're not going to waste your time. We're going to give you our very best every time. But this is what I ask. I ask that you give your best as well. And so that means that you're here, you're engaged, you're paying attention, you know, you're eliminating distractions. You're not just kind of halfway here, halfway looking at the TV or doing this, that, whatever. To the best of your ability, eliminate distractions. Take notes because paper doesn't forget. And so, or if you have your iPad or whatever it may be, take notes and then follow through because there's going to be action steps every single week because this isn't just about uh, education. This really is about application. So it's not just being a hearer of the word. It really is learning to be a doer of the word really fast. And so um, I want us to have that mentality that I'm going to give this my all. If you're going to take the 30 minutes or so to be on here on Wednesday nights and we're going to give you our best and you're going to give your best follow through with that with with doing the action steps and so uh, what is the foundation I'm going to jump into my part of the word what is the foundation that we're going to be uh, building on and and I'm going to be going fast because it's content rich but we also know that we don't have a whole lot of time on these zoom calls uh, but our foundation more than anything else is Jesus who is the living word who is the Word made flesh. I'm going to try something. I haven't done this yet, but uh, there we go. And so, yay me. Um, but Jesus is the living Word. He is the Word made flesh. He is the foundation that we build uh, our lives, our ministry, and our leadership on. And so uh, Jesus said in Matthew 7, verse 24, uh, many of you know this scripture, a wise man builds his house upon the rock. And so, and then I think of, of the, uh, the, the famous hymn, On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. Any other foundation that you want to build your life on is sinking sand. What that means is when the storms come, because we all go through storms, that when the storms come, that your foundation, if it's not built on Christ and it's not built on the word of God, it's going to crumble. It's only when you're founded on the rock of Christ Jesus. And so you have to know the Bible is the greatest leadership book in the history of mankind. It's better and greater and more valuable. It has more insight than any John Maxwell book. It's, it's greater than Dale Carnegie's, you know, how to win friends and influence people. And so it literally is a gold mine of wisdom. So I have a, I have a question for you. Who or what is your foundation or who or what has been your foundation. If it's anything or anybody other than Jesus and the Word of God, I want you to consider making a change tonight. <clears throat> you know, maybe uh, your foundation has been, you know, your belief in yourself, in your charisma, in your education, in your knowledge, in, you know, in the people you know, or in, you know, your foundation has been your financial stability or, you know, whatever it may be. If it's been anything 
other than uh, founded on Jesus and the word. I want, you, I want to encourage you uh, to consider making a change tonight, making that shift. It might even be an ever so subtle shift. And so <clears throat> I want to take these next few minutes uh, to share about another vital aspect of a great foundation of leadership. Kim laid, I think, obviously Jesus is the ultimate foundation, but what keeps us going is our why. Understand why we're on these calls. Understand why we're reading, why we're digging in, why we're making this, this commitment. But, it, but, but the, 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 um, <clears throat> the aspect that I'm going to share is, is a decision, and it's one decision that we need to make if we're going to get the most out of our times e each week, if we're going to see the benefit 30, 60, and 100 fold. I've shared this many times throughout the years. You might be one decision away from a changed life, from a completely different life, from changing the trajectory of your life, from getting unstuck. A and that decision is decide to be consistent. You know, when it comes to being on these calls, when it comes to, you know, doing the assignments and, and, and uh, taking the action steps, be consistent. Decide to follow through on your commitment. Don't be like everybody else who starts strong and then fades out. Decide to be consistent in your development as a leader. And really on these things, you can't help but also be uh, developing yourself as a minister. And so decide to be here. Decide to to make time even if you're in other places the beauty of it is you can be wherever you're at and and still listen in if you can't if, if you're driving you can listen in you know or something like that and so you can't grow and develop the way you're going to need to if you're not here so prioritize this obviously I'm kind of preaching to the choir but I also know this is only week one and so let's have this same sort of attendance and even more so on week 10 you know and so the other thing with that is decide to be a finisher Anybody can start, but it takes perseverance and it takes consistency and it takes faithfulness to be a finisher. I want to remind you of something I said on Sunday that you got to remember, this isn't just about you. You know, this is far beyond you. This is about the people that God has called you to reach and influence and impact with his power, truth, and love. And there's people you don't even know yet that he's called you to. There's people that you don't know yet that you're developing yourself into now so that you can reach them then. And so if nothing else, man, if, if you don't have any other why, it's for them. Do it for them. Because understand, consistency, and really another word for consistency is faithfulness. Faithfulness is powerful. Faithfulness is beneficial. Look at what it says in Proverbs 28, verse 20. A faithful man will abound in blessings. I don't know about you. Do any of you want to abound in blessings? Matter of fact, let's go ahead and do it. Put a one in the chat. If you want to abound in blessings, I know this is the most obvious thing, you know, on the planet, but uh, put a one in there. If you want to abound in blessings, yeah, we all do. No duh, it's, it's like a no brainer, but um, if you're faithful, if you want to abound in the blessings of God, you gotta be faithful. See, faithfulness and consistency are keys to effective leadership, right? You find me somebody who's inconsistent, nobody's going to trust them. You find me somebody who's faithless, they're never even going to rise in any sort of leadership ability or leadership opportunity. And so haven't you heard that 90% of the battle is just showing up and really showing up consistently? And so this is what I want to do. I'm going to wrap up here with a story that we all know, but there's some leadership lessons that we can learn from the story of the tortoise and the hare. I know we all know this, the old Aesop's fable. I'm going to read it. I'm going to share with you and highlight to you a couple of points that we can steal from this that's going to help our leadership, and then we're going to pray, and then I've got a, a couple of action steps. And so the hare, the rabbit, once boasted of his speed before all the other animals. He said, I've never yet been beaten when I put forth my full speed. I challenge anyone here to race with me. The tortoise said quietly, I accept your challenge. That's a joke, said the hare. I can dance around you all the way. Keep your boasting until you've won, answered the tortoise. Shall we race? So a course was fixed and, and a start was made. The hare darted almost out of sight uh, immediately, but soon stopped. And to show his contempt for the tortoise, lay down to have a nap. The tortoise plodded along and plodded along 
And when the hero woke from his nap, he saw the tortoise just near the finish line, but he couldn't run in time to save the race. Then the tortoise said, slow but steady progress wins the race. See, there's some things that we can learn, even on night one, even in laying the foundations from this story. First thing is, if you're taking notes, it doesn't matter how tough the goal is. It doesn't matter how impossible the goal is. If we keep at it and consistently doing our part, we're going to be able to achieve it. If we keep at it. To win, we need to steadily just put in the work. Even if it's slow, even if it seems like, you know, you're not making it or whatever, you can do it. And then the last thing, um, man, what's going on? There we go. Consistently doing what you need to do makes goal achievement possible. Again, it's consistent. Even if it's slow, even if it seems like you're not making progress, being consistent, doing it, putting in the work day after day after day, even when you can't see it, other people are going to be able to see it for you. But we also need to know on the flip side, ability is inadequate if effort is inconsistent. You know, I love what Kevin Durant said. He said, hard work trumps talent if talent doesn't work hard. And so it doesn't matter how great you are, how much charisma you have or anything like that. It, it, ability is inadequate if your effort's inconsistent. And so the hare knew that he could beat the tortoise 10 times over, but he thought, uh, but he thought that the effort could wait until he was just close to, to the goal, you know. And so he put forth his effort when it was too late. And how many people do we know, <clears throat> excuse me, that are like that? They, they start strong, they're going after it, they're showing up the legacy Zoom, but then all of a sudden, you know, man, it gets to be a little difficult or this, that, whatever. It's easy to get disconnected. And then all of a sudden you miss opportunities and you could have been here and you should have been here, but you still find yourself here because of inconsistencies. So the moral of the story is, please catch this. If you have all you need to win the race, and guess what you do? Everybody on here, you have everything you need to win the race. God's given us everything we need for life and godliness. The only thing that can stop you from winning the race is a lack of consistent effort. Not just effort, but consistent effort. The only thing that can stop you is a lack of consistent effort. And so let me wrap up with reminding us of what uh, we, need to, we need to remember. Who or what has been your foundation? Really think about it, you know, is, uh, do you need to make a change tonight? Who's been your foundation? What is your why or who is your why? Is it your children? Is it your family? Is it the people God's called you to impact? Is it just, man, I just want to please Jesus. That's the easy way. But when it gets down to it, Kim said, who or what gets you out of bed in the morning? And then can you imagine becoming who God's created you to be? Can you only imagine? Can you close your eyes and imagine being who God's called you to be? And can you imagine him saying, well done, good and faithful servant? That's the ultimate goal. And so I want to pray. We're going to give you an action step or two, and we will be done with our first ever Zoom. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that we would take this to heart, that we would be a people of consistent effort. <clears throat> God, that we would lay our foundation. God, that you would be our foundation. God, that yes, you would be our why, but even as we go throughout the rest of our night, God, that you, we would be thinking about who is our why? What is our why? Why are we doing this? God, it could even be the people that uh, uh, we don't even know yet. So Father, I pray that you would just bless us. God, stir us, speak to us, God, that we would lay solid foundations on Christ, the solid rock, we stand, all other ground is sinking sand, God. We lay this foundation to, to, to build all of our leadership on. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> hey, uh, real fast, some action steps for you. I know it's 730, and I want to honor your time. Calendar next week, Zoom. We made an adjustment from when we originally announced it. It's going to be every Wednesday night at 7 to 730. We're just going to make it Wednesday nights. Uh, consistently 7 to 7.30. We think we have an idea uh, as a way to get like people like Pastor Abram on here and things like that when he's doing legacy students. Um, get in starting point if you haven't. Find your place to serve if you're not on the dream team yet. Uh, we need some men out in the parking lot and we need some people investing into our children and into our babies. And last thing, here's the action step for the week. 
uh, I want to encourage you to consistently read the Bible every day. Even take like 10 minutes. Read a chapter or whatever. We used to challenge the students, the 10 and 10, 10 minutes of prayer, 10 minutes in the Word, 10 minutes of worship. But find 10 and 10. Find 20 minutes of time to dig in and consistently uh, um, give yourself to the word, give yourself, because again, the word of God is the greatest leadership book in the history of mankind. If you don't know where to start, start in the book of Matthew and begin to dig in, but give yourself to 10 minutes consistently every day. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the very first legacy Zoom. We did it. I can't believe we got it done in a half an hour. I'm so incredibly thankful for all of you who came. I'm trying to get back to the screen to see everybody who's on the call, but uh, I thank you so much uh, for being here. Yeah, wow. I love it. And so that is it. Thank you. Thank you. Be consistent. Choose to grow as a leader and uh, find your why. Write it down. Put it somewhere where you can see it. This is my why. These people are my why. God bless you. I love you so much. I love you. I'm praying for you every single day. Really, I promise. Have a great, great week. We will see you on Sunday. God bless you.